172 in the new and 156 in the revised. Amazing grace. And let us really sing and worship Amazing Grace because His grace has touched us today. 164, 172, and 156. situation 
and rescue us because we all are in some degree lost. Let us therefore, as we prepare to welcome Jesus into our situation and to respond to his call on us, let us ask for his forgiveness and his mercy. I confess to our Lord, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and as you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you rights and praiseworthy service, grant we pray that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I say that you will listen to the readings.
people who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven.
5,000 dollars a month. But in one year, they are able to build a house cash for 150, 200 thousand dollars and still live comfortably. We all suspect, we don't know for a fact, but we suspect that something else is coming in from somewhere else. Ain't it? Yes. We suspect that something else, something more, is coming in from somewhere else. And as a result of that, we watch these people with suspicion. Nothing, nothing big. We watch them with suspicion. Because all it is that this man could be working for five thousand dollars a month. We know his salary because we have insight into what his salary is. We know his money. And in one year, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to build a house, cash. Something has to be not right somewhere. That is how the people looked at Zac as Zacchaeus. That is how the people looked at Zacchaeus because they saw him as a part of the oppressing force, the establishment. And so they hated him. They hated him. So while Zacchaeus was a big man, while Zacchaeus was a man of stature or status, even if he was a diminutive, they saw him as riding roughshod over them to get where he is or where he gets to. Yes. And so they disliked him. So we are told that Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus to see what kind of a man Jesus was. But he was too short to see Jesus on the level with everybody else because he would be way down below them. Because he was a short man. He was a big man, but he was a short man. And so, I want us to pay attention to the fact that Jesus, Zacchaeus, was short. Short, not so much because of his height, but short. But short. Let us see where Zacchaeus was short. I will just use a few shortness of Zacchaeus. Of, yes, Zacchaeus. One, Zacchaeus was a very uncaring person. He was very uncaring because he would steal from the people to enrich himself. So he was short on caring. He was short on caring. He did not care about people. I'm saying you are short on love. If you love your people, you will not want to steal from them. That's why when Jesus said the greatest commandment is a commandment of love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Because we know that where love is, there is no place for deceit. Zacchaeus was a deceitful man. Because as I said, when the government say 20%, he adds another 10% which goes where? In his pocket. That is why he's able to build a $500,000 house in a year. Ten percent goes to him. So he is short on love. He's short on love. He is short 
on selflessness. He was a very selfish man. Because all he thought about was about his own comfort himself. He did not bother where people will get the money from to pay these taxes. He did not bother whether recession is just there and people are just recovering or struggling in the collection, in the business. He did not care. He did not care anything about anybody. Once he gets 10%, he good. Friends, do you know anybody like that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I am one too. I usually say, when you start pointing fingers, make sure you look that your other fingers are pointing. Make sure you do that. But do you know anybody like that? Yeah. Who is willing to destroy whoever and whatever is in their way so that they can make progress. Those are some of the shortness of Zacchaeus. And friends, those are some of the shortness of ourselves. Those are some of the shortness of ourselves. We do not care. We have no real love. And we are very, very selfish in our attitude. But Zacchaeus, but Zacchaeus heard that Jesus was coming into the community. And he would have heard a lot about this man called Zacchaeus, Jesus. So he wants to see what kind of man that is. So he must be in the rally. He must be in the crowd where he could see this man Jesus. But he remembers that he is a little man. He's a short man. And he has to do something to see. You know some of us, we like to put on a show. We like a show. We be. So we want to show that we be. So Zacchaeus, while he was a diminutive, he felt that he must be above the rest of them anyhow. So he said, I know Jesus passing yet. I will climb up in the tree and I'm going to stay there. Jesus won't see me. Jesus won't see me, but I'm have a good view. Of Jesus. You know, sometimes we have these activities, and some of us, we say, things starting to o'clock this evening, you know, we can't come to church because we want to go early to get a good space. Remember that? I want to go early because I want a good space where I can see everything. So Zacchaeus was like that. He went ahead and he climbed up in the tree so he could still have a vantage point. Big view. Everything I say, my brothers and sisters, I want us to see how it fits in us. Everything I say, everything we discussed this morning, I want us to see how it fits in us. Because the story of Zacchaeus is also my story. It's also your story. It's also the story of mankind. We want to be ahead. So Zacchaeus goes ahead and he finds a nice branch right over the road. So he hangs himself there. The leaves going to cover him. So he going to see how Jesus looking and what Jesus thinking and how Jesus speaking to the people, but Jesus won't see him. Friends, hey, are you doing know that this way? Is there anything that Jesus cannot see? Is there anything about me that Jesus does not know? Is there anything in your life or my life that we hide from Jesus? I say, 
we can fool all these people sitting here today, including myself. We can fool all the people from South all the way up to Pedmata along this road. We can fool them sometimes. Sometimes. But we cannot fool all of them all the time. And certainly, we can never fool Christ. We can never fool God. Because long before Zacchaeus decided that he's going to take that vantage point, Jesus already knew what he planned. Him. Jesus already knew before he even knew that he was planning. Because God knows us through and through. So Zacchaeus takes his high point. He goes up in the tree. And he's there waiting for Jesus to pass by, seeing how he's behaving in the crowd. And know what kind of man Jesus is. I repeat, there is nothing that we can do that Jesus does not know. There is nothing about our lives that Jesus is not aware of. So we cannot hide from him. Zacchaeus might have thought he could hide from Jesus. Because he's a big man. And he knows how he's getting money. So he didn't want Jesus to know. He wants to hide. So he's up in the tree. So he's up in the tree. And Jesus coming and the crowd making noise because they're happy. They see their king and, they, and they're making sound. But he's up there. But of all the people who is in that big crowd, Jesus is going to look up in the tree and he's going to see like Zacchaeus up there. And he's not just going to see him and pass on. Because he realized Zacchaeus is short and he wants to fill him up. So he's not going to just see him there in all his misery, in all his worthlessness, in all his selfishness, in all his greed, in all his whatever he has, and pass him by. That's not how Jesus operates, friends. That is not how Jesus operates. When Jesus knows that I am falling and failing, Jesus is going to push his hand down and try to pull me up. Am I correct? Am I correct? Yes. He will pull his, push his hand down wherever I am and try to bring me up because he does not want any of us to be lost. He doesn't want any of us to suffer in the pit of fire. He does not want any of us to go astray. So he is going to try and pull us back. So not, he not just sees Lazarus, he not just tells Lazarus that I see you. But he says, Lazarus, come down from there. I am going, I say Lazarus, it's not Lazarus, it's Zacchaeus. Since morning I've been confusing Lazarus and Zacchaeus, I don't know why, but I think you, you get the point, it's Zacchaeus are talking about. So you may think you hear me say Lazarus, it's not Lazarus, I mean. He says, Zacchaeus, come down from there. I have a mission for you. I'm going and spend some time in your life. I am going to your house. So get with it. Get with it. I am going home with you. It is for Zacchaeus to say, Yes, Lord, come along. Or I welcome you, Lord. Because Jesus, no matter how good we are or how bad we are, Jesus is never going to impose himself on us. Never. So Zacchaeus had to say, okay, because he says, I am standing at your door and I am knocking. If you hear me and you open the door, I will come in to you and I will have a feast with you. I will make my home in your presence. I will give you another life, a new life. Jesus is telling me that, he's telling you that, he's telling us that. Open your hearts and accept the same Jesus who is passing by today and wants to make a difference in your life. Open your hearts and allow him to find the space and be a part of your life, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters. You cannot 
afford to refuse his call, his invitation, and expect to go where he wants to go. He will take you there as long as you are willing. Zacchaeus had to be willing to accept Jesus' invitation, even if it looks as though Jesus is imposing himself on him. But Zacchaeus still had to be willing to accept him and allow him to come. So here we are, making Zacchaeus' story our story too. We too have to be willing to let Jesus into our space, into our lives, so that he can make a difference in our lives, in our lives. So Zacchaeus welcomes Jesus. He says he came now immediately and welcomes him joyfully. Hey, Jesus knew me. Well, I'm good. No, you're not good, but you have to get good. Jesus said in the last line of the gospel, the Son of Man comes to seek and to save that which was lost. That's what he said. Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, comes to seek, to look for, and to save those who are lost. So when you see we sit down in church and we pray with big people and we feel that we have it all, we tell him, Jesus, we're not interested in you. Go somewhere else because we have it already. And we lie to ourselves. We lie to ourselves. Zacchaeus, the short man, showed us that we were lying to ourselves. And Jesus will not impose himself on us. So Zacchaeus comes down, welcomes him joyfully, and takes him to his house. I would suppose that having gone to his house, Zacchaeus quickly calls all his servants, come, 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 get ready, prepare this, prepare that, prepare the other thing. We're going to have a celebration because the man Jesus is coming or is in my house. So everybody running here to skelter, doing what they're supposed to do so that they can have a big banquet. Zacchaeus makes a declaration. He's happy that the man Jesus singled him out and comes and stays his out. So he's happy. So he makes a declaration. Yes, yeah, Zacchaeus. Master, if I thief anything from anybody, if I thief anything from anybody, oh gosh, Zacchaeus, play a game with that. Let me hear you. Zacchaeus is a tax collector, and because he's a tax collector, just because he's a tax collector, he is a thief. So he's been thieving them people all the time. As I pointed out, when the government said 20, he said 30, and the 10 is his own. He thiefed. Look around and you see how many people get big of a government contract. Out of government contract. Out of collecting revenue for government. Whether it is the marketing board or whoever else. They get big. Because they are borrowing illegally what is rightfully the government's or the people's, and they pocket it, and they pocket it. So Zacchaeus says to Jesus, Lord, look, if I thief anything from anybody, I've given them back four times what I thief. Four times. So if he thief the $5,000 from you, you know you're getting $20,000 back. Woo! That big, get it? That big. It means that Zacchaeus must have been a multimillionaire. Because for the amount of people he's been over the years, 
to be able to give each one of them four times the amount that you take from them, you have to have a good bit. But I know people, I've no, known of people who were very, very rich in this world. They had a lot. And then one day they had an encounter with this Jesus Christ. And they have decided, listen, to show that I really am serious about my relationship with my God, I am going to stop making my riches my God. And I am going to share my riches with all the people. Hey, is that your say, Master? In addition to giving back everybody that a thief from, four times the amount that a thief from them, I am going to give half of my property, half of my property to the poor. That we call restitution. That we call restitution. Restoring what I have illegally got from whoever I got it from and give them back so that they can enjoy what I have taken from them without their authorization and permission. I hear nowadays my great 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 grandparents came from Africa as slaves. They were stolen from Africa and they brought to the Caribbean and the Americas to work on the plantation without pay, without ownership. So they were slaves. Today I am hearing that we as a people throughout the Caribbean and the Americas are claiming something we call reparation. Is that a word? Reparation. Reparation. I say but it's red. Reparation. For the times that our parents and great 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 grandparents were treated as slaves in the Caribbean and in the Americas. So we are looking for somebody somewhere to pay us a certain sum of money. So, by the way, my friend, if my great great grandparents worked on a plantation somewhere in the Caribbean, in Grenada, or wherever else, as a slave, contributed to the development of the masters, if that happened, and I believe it did, tomorrow when they start to pay reparation, I will be a millionaire. Yes, tomorrow when they start to pay reparation, I will be a millionaire. Because all their contribution accumulated over the years Till today, me, all my brothers and sisters, all my cousins, all my aunts, all my nephews, all my sisters. family, those who have gone before, their, their shares will come to me because it has to be traced back to where I am. So I must be, all of us sitting here will be millionaires. Except, of course, the Indians. The Indians didn't come from Africa, so they will not have anything to get. This is African we're talking about. That's by the way, that wasn't was supposed to be part of this, but here we are. So yes, I hear we're talking nowadays about reparation. Now Zacchaeus made a declaration that he would repair 
all the damage that he has given made on the people, giving away half of his estate, his property, to the poor, wherever they are, give them back. And then, in addition to the half that he given away, the next half, he will share it out four times what he did from whoever he did it from. Because you see, my friends, when we get a true encounter with the man Jesus Christ, when we get a true encounter with the man Jesus Christ, we have a change of heart. And we cannot go on continuing to live in the same old way that we have been living. That is not repentance. That is not uh, an encounter. So sometimes we go to confession, for example. We go to confession, especially those of us who have big things and we, we think big things. And we say, Father, Forgive me, for I have sinned. My sins are like this. For the last three years, I've been taking $50,000 each year from my employer. And I want to make a change of heart, so I want to confess that. $50,000 for the last three years, that's $150,000. Isn't it? Yes. But you're still driving around with the car that you bought from that $150,000. You're still living in the house that you paid the $150,000 for. That you, you're still wearing the suits and the things that you bought out of that $50,000 a month a year. Where is the reparation? Where is it? So, how do we get the border? Go about that. See, friends, when we decide to make a change of heart and we want to give Jesus our life, and some people just brag and boast, I have heard, I've brought Jesus into my life and I am a changed person. Even they say the things I used to do, I will not do them anymore. And all of that. Think about it. A reparation, a reparation, restoration is not an easy thing. Because over the times that you have been committing these acts, it builds up. And there is a time when, although you make a clean confession, you think, you're still carrying the same things that you're confessing about. How do you treat with that? How do you deal with that? That is why Zacchaeus was able to say to the Lord, Master, I am going to give away half of my property. Half. And the next half should be enough to give everybody who are thief from something. From that point on, he is expected to live on what is truly coming into his life now, or on a good relationship with his God. That is restitution. That is restitution. Think about it when you go to confession next time. Think about it. Am I prepared to restore, to give back, to do a way with? All that I have acquired by the illegal practice that I have been engaged in. Am I prepared? Am I able to? So it's all well and good to say, God forgive me, because I will do that. He calls us to also be willing to restore both the relationship and the benefits that we gave from it. Can you see that as possible? So I say to us, my dear brothers and sisters, let us make the Lazarus story our story.
Let us fit ourselves in Satya sorry. Well, you know what I, I told you already. Let us fit ourselves into the Zacchaeus story. Let us do that. And let us feel where this story affects us. Because, my dear friends, it does affect us. It will affect us. It has been affecting us. So, we fit ourselves into the story. Finally, Jesus goes into Zacchaeus' house to have a fet, a meal. He just like to eat. He like fet. That's a short thing. He like a fet. He goes into Zacchaeus' house to eat. Now, friends, when you make a change, it is never going to sit easy with your friends or your brothers and sisters, your rest of your family. It ain't going to sit easy. Because they believe that you belong in that condition and you must stay there. They believe that you belong in that place and that's where you have to stay. So when Jesus went into Zacchaeus' house, they complained. Eh, how Jesus could go by that man? Do you know who that man is? That man is a big thief and Jesus going in the house. Think about it. Father gets a young man to paint his house. Because the house needs painting. He gets a young man to paint his house. Of course the young man has to go in the house to paint it. He can't stay home and paint the house and paint it. Can't do that. So he has to go in the house and paint it. Did he back by people? Say, now these people, whichever country, country, whichever country you're from, from. Start to see the fella for who he used to be. Hey, Father, you don't know that fella. Father, that is the same fella that thief Miss Miss Louisa money up there in there. He break up with she out and he, he nearly kill her. He thief she money. He spent all years in jail. Father, that is the same fella that chop out the boy and run into that team. You know that kind of story that we just put on the people? The man go to jail, he spent time, he must have been repatriated, he comes back. But we could only see him where he used to be. That's how they saw Zacchaeus. That is how they saw Zacchaeus, where he used to be the big thief. And Jesus will go and sit down in his house and have a meal. Jesus must be crazy. So Jesus could claim to be the Son of God when you don't know a man like that. You should know that. So we prefer to leave people in their bad situation. We prefer to leave people in their bad situation because that is where they belong. No. Jesus says, I have come to seek and to save those who are lost. And if we are going to be the ones who claim to be followers of Christ and doing what Christ says we must do and doing what Christ does do, then we too have to seek out and help those who are lost. That's what we have to do. To seek out and to help those who are lost. Those who are already saved are saved. And that's why Jesus said to them guys and them, when they bring the girl, who they say they come, they caught her in adultery. They bring her to Jesus because they expect Jesus to uphold the law and tell them to stone the woman. And Jesus watched them good in the poor. <laughs> and he says to them, any one of you who does not have a sin, Take a stone and pay it at her. You know the story, eh? Jesus said, if you sitting in this church today don't have sin, then condemn the person you don't have sin. Jesus will understand. Jesus will understand. But all of us who have sin must first decide to repent of our sins before we can go and see how we can destroy 
the other person who also has sin. Because that person might be seeking forgiveness and be willing to restore what has been lost. My dear friends, Jesus has come. He has come for me and he has come for you. Because he knows as much as I know and you know that we are lost. And in our lostness, Jesus comes down into the gutter with us. And he is calling us, Cecil, it's for me to answer. Joanna, it's for Joanna to answer. Patricia, it's for Patricia to answer. Come out of that mess that you're in. I am here to save you. I am here to draw you out. I am here to make you a new being. But you have to be ready. Let us, my brothers and sisters, take the story of Zacchaeus. Make it our story. Take Zacchaeus' name out of the story and put my name, your name in it. And reflect on what is happening in that story and see how it is affecting you directly or otherwise. And let God take charge of all that you plan to do and all that you are doing and make a big difference in your life. May God guide us. May he bless us. And may he save us. In Jesus' name. Amen.
for the ability to forgive, that we may show ourselves as children of God through forgiving those who have wronged us and reaching out to them with concern and kindness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, look with favor upon us and save us. For the grace of conversion, that we may accept God's generous love, return to the path of life, and be renewed through God's mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, look with favor upon us and save us. For a spirit of stewardship, that we may protect and care for all creation which God has made and which reflects God's glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, look with favor upon us and save us. For all who are ill, that God will bring healing to all who are sick, renewal of hope to all who find life difficult and strength to all who serve their needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, do the favor upon us and save us. For peace throughout the world, that God will protect all who are at risk because of warfare, gang activity, of violence on city streets. We pray to the Lord. Lord, do the favor upon us and save us. For one another, that God will bring to fulfillment in us every good purpose and virtue that God has planted deep within us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, do the favor upon us and save us. For all who have died particularly, particularly our family members, our friends, and our fellow parishioners, that God will show them his merciful love by welcoming them into the eternal banquet he has prepared for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, do with favor upon us and save us. For all our needs and intentions that we now recall in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, we give you thanks for listening to our prayers. We know that you always answer us according to your will in our lives. So we present them to you and we ask for your goodness, your mercy, and your kindness. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Our sacrificial offerings in the same one day, 147 in the old, 155 in the new, and 137 in the revised. 147, 155, 137. For distance, we have a walk up collection. The basket is at the foot of the altar.
May these sacrificial offerings, O oh Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy through Christ our oh Lord. Amen. Jesus taught us to call our Father to depend on his providence and to be ready and willing to forgive our brothers even as we seek his forgiveness. Let us pray as Jesus taught us.
invited Jesus into our hearts. We are telling him that we are coming just as I am. So we will sing just as I am. 179 in the old, 187 in the new, and 170 in the revised, just as I am.
food for thought for the weak. Hope is more powerful than hatred, and peace more powerful than war. It's by Pope Francis. Anybody celebrating birthday today or this week? Anniversary? Things back. That's the end of the notices. Please do have a blessed week. And we thank Deacon St. Louis for celebrating with us and giving us all that food for thought. Some of us may not even have to go today. <laughs> have a blessed week, everybody. Thank you.